Okay, away we go. Somebody give me a heads up. All righty, so what I was talking about was that we have uh, almost 18 days of inventory, which is really good. Okay, yeah, we're good. Okay, and we have listed 133 homes over the weekend, so that's really good. Um, the expensive homes are still flying off the shelf. Uh, <laughs> we're like almost 84% for the first four months of this year as we did all of last year. So if you're listing those expensive homes, they're not gonna last on the market very long. Um, people from California bringing their money. So today, let's see, let's, uh, it's already 9.25. I wanna talk about some prospecting ideas. And um, let's see, you know, uh, we have these beautiful homes. Hi, great morning, great morning, Claudia. Good to see you, my love. Good to see you. I uh, don't know if you're still vacationing, but if you are on that Mother's Day vacation, uh, enjoy the day. Um, and if you're working, enjoy the day too. <laughs> so what is three circle prospecting? Um, if you do it right, you may get more listings. And if your buyers lose out in a multiple offer situation, or you're looking for more listings, these tactics can tackle those problems. And while helping you build your database and um, and, and give you better brand exposure. So circle prospecting is really an old idea and um, it helps us begin conversations that lead to relationships and those relationships mostly lead to transactions. Um, so what is it? So you begin with a target house that has some kind of activity around it. You know, something just listed, something just sold. And an upcoming open house or a recently listed house or just a just sold house, anything that had any kind of activity. And years ago, <laughs> years ago, you know, I talk about that. That's like decades, right? Circle prospecting got its name from the practice of using a map to draw a circle around 20 homes closest to the target house. <clears throat> and then contacting those homeowners to let them know about recent activity. So, but in today's market, I would still begin with a target home. And from there, I would identify anyone interested in knowing what is happening or has happened with this house. So consider circle prospecting that could help in these scenarios, okay? Your buyer lost a multiple offer situation, which creates an opportunity to see if any homeowners nearby would consider selling because you have a buyer, right? Your buyer lost down on that house in that neighborhood and they are still interested in buying in that neighborhood and that is a very legitimate story to tell and very believable you know uh, years ago people would just say hey i have a buyer for your house <laughs> and they just wanted a listing but you really have a buyer for their house and that is like such a credible way to uh, get a listing and get a sale and perhaps another sale because the seller may want to buy. So marketing a coming soon listing to the neighbors by providing them opportunity to choose their neighborhood um, is also a good thing to do when you're doing the uh, circle three. So just sold listings where you can share the details of how the most recent sale in their neighborhood may have affected their home's value. And we know that happens. And to get started, okay, here's the way we would suggest that you do it. Um, and we'll review some scenarios. So step one, find the homeowner's information. So the first step in circle prospecting is identifying the owners of the homes you will be calling. So the local property appears, the, the local property appraiser's website or a CRS tax search. And, you know, we have Realist and, and, uh, and we have tax searches and that'll provide the name and the address of each homeowner. So once we have the homeowner's name, then the next step is identifying the owner's phone number. So how do you do that? Well, there are there's apps out there that will do that for you. It's one is called Forewarn, F-O-R-E-W-A-R-N, and another one, um, it's that one is incredibly accurate. Truthfinder, that's accurate, and Cole, C-O-L-E Realty Resource, and I used that years ago, and and. To my recollection, that's very accurate too. So now <clears throat> you've got the phone numbers 
And now you're going to gather all the sales information for the neighborhood. And you're going to prepare for the calls you make by gathering the data about the neighborhood. And I always like to know and have the following um, before I make my calls. Number one, the houses in the neighborhood that have sold in the past six months. You know, they may be on another street and they don't know that. The price per square foot of the homes that have sold. The days on the market and the general details like number of bedrooms and baths for each house. And then other houses that are currently for sale in the neighborhood. Homes currently under contract or in escrow. Comparison of the neighborhood's price per square foot and days on the market versus the overall market. And you know, all this data is available. All this data is available, uh, you know, through your MLS. And the historical data helps us share details about what's happening in the neighborhood and how that impacts their homes. And I would include leases, homes that uh, lease. Uh, and sometimes what I used to do when I would do this, I would actually um, do a search on the entire subdivision to find out how many homes were leased in that subdivision. I just think that's good information if they ask. Some people may not ask. And then now that you know how to gather the needed information, like you got the contact information, there's a few scenarios so that are yielding the best results. Number one, you use circle prospecting when your buyers missed out on a multiple offer situation. <clears throat> And that first scenario involves calling the homeowners who live near a, near a house your buyers missed out on. So doing this provides an opportunity to strengthen your relationship with your buyers by going the extra mile. And the conversation with the buyers could go something, let's see, like this. I know you're disappointed and I'll do everything in my power uh, to find you the perfect home. I plan to reach out to the owners of homes near the one we missed out on and to see if they know someone in the neighborhood who would like to sell or consider selling. So the move shows the buyers that you are willing to go the extra mile for them and provides the opportunity to deepen your relationship with them. I, I know from what I'm hearing from the agent that their buyers get really discouraged and one or two that have attended our classes have said they've actually lost the buyers. Um, and, you know, adversity like missing out on a multiple offer negotiation creates a chance to build a client out of what was previously a potential customer. When you show them you're going the extra mile, that that speaks volumes about your professionalism and the care that you're taking to take care of them. Uh, and it provides an opportunity to call homeowners with ready, willing and able potential buyers for their home. And these calls are purposeful and they could sound something like this. <clears throat> Hi, this is Ruthie with ABC Realty. And I'm not sure if you know this, but the house a few doors down from you at 123 Live Oak, came on the market two days ago and the sellers received multiple offers and they're under contract to sell their home. I was working with one of the families who made an offer on the house, but mine wasn't accepted. They love this neighborhood and I'm doing everything in my power to help them find the perfect home in your neighborhood. So I'm calling to see if you'd heard of any of your neighbors who might consider selling. Then you listen and see if the homeowner has anything to say. Notice I didn't ask them if they were consider selling. If they're thinking of selling, they'll tell you. And if they aren't, they'll tell you. But they might ask you about the home selling price. Okay, so explain that though you won't know that until closing, you can give them a general idea. You just have to be careful about that. Um, most homes have been selling for list price or higher, and then you can let the, the homeowner know how that will impact the value of their home and allow the conversation to flow naturally but don't hang up until you ask the most critical question and what is that well mr homeowner before we get off the phone i'd be the worst realtor in the world if i didn't ask you is there a price at which you might consider selling your home then I'd love to keep in touch and, and occasionally update you on what we're seeing with sales activity in the neighborhood. Would that be okay? And they, they usually say, yes, great. I don't want to bombard you with calls. So if it's okay, I prefer to keep in touch by email. And then if you see something you have questions about, you can give me a call. Is there an email address you would prefer me to use when sending these updates? The notion 
that we that conversation's over. So the notion that we should always be closing is a broken one that doesn't work anymore in this situation, especially. Instead, we should be focusing on building relationships. And that's what we're doing with Buffini and, and uh, Tom Ferry and so many other of the coaches in the country and perhaps even your broker. It's about building these relationships. And this is a wonderful, wonderful time to do it when homes are selling so quickly and we have the opportunity and so many homes are selling and we have the opportunity to do this circle prospecting. You know, don't look over your shoulder in six months and say, why didn't I do that? Do it now. And, and that was an order. <laughs> um, so by introducing ourselves and providing information to people, we can start building a list of people who will turn to us when they need a real estate agent. And so when you are actively building relationships and having conversations, you'll find listing opportunities. All right. That was scenario one. So let's go over scenario two. Use circle prospecting when listing a home. Call the owners in the neighborhood right before taking your listing live. So now you have a listing. Now you want to call the neighbors and tell them that you're going to list a home. And this is a great way to possibly find buyers for listing through friends or family members of the current owners in the neighborhood. It also prompts conversation with homeowners who might be considering selling their home. So you're providing information. Now, <clears throat> what we used to do is go and knock doors and get people flyers and tell them that we're getting ready to list a home. And you can do that too. But you can also call them because you can get their information and I will, I'll speak to the calling in just a second. So it would go something like this. This is Ruthie with ABC Realty. And we're putting a home in your neighborhood on the market in the next few days. We'd love to let neighbors in the neighborhood know about these listings. So you have the opportunity to choose your neighbors. If you have friends or family who might be considering buying in your neighborhood, or if you know anyone moving to your neighborhood, I'd glad to share information about this new listing with them, or I can give you the details and you can pass the information on to them. So you're all open, all transparent. You're coming across as a genuine person that's genuinely interested in selling this owner's home. And they won't forget that and they'll read between the lines. And doing this offers us a chance to add value to the homeowners in the neighborhood and position ourselves, you, as the go-to resource for the, for the area. And it allows you to potentially own both sides of the sale if one of the homeowners knows of a, of a potential buyer. So what's more, it allows us to begin a conversation with other homeowners who might be interested in knowing how this new listing will impact their home's value. And, he, and always remember to ask this most critical question. Ready? Okay. In today's market, we're likely to see a lot of activity and we might get multiple offers, meaning that someone will miss out on the house. So I'd be the worst realtor in the world if I didn't at least ask you whether there's a price at which you'd consider selling your home. I'd love to keep in touch and occasionally give you updates on what we're seeing with sales activities in the neighborhood. And would that be okay? Great. I don't want to bombard you with calls. So if it's okay, I prefer to keep in touch by email. And then if you see something you have questions about, you can give me a call or email me. Is there an email address you prefer me to use when sending these updates to you? That was scenario two. Now here's scenario three. Use circle prospecting when listing, when a, sorry, when a listing sells. So you can use it to add value to the people in the neighborhood, even when the house that sells isn't one of your listings. Be careful not to imply that you sold the house, though, but use the transaction details to inform the homeowners. If the house is one that you sold, you'd be able to share proof that you're doing work in the neighborhood. But if you aren't the listing or selling agent, you can still be the information source for the homeowners reporting the sales details to them. Hi, this is Ruthie from ABC Realty. And I want to let you know that we recently sold a house in your neighborhood. Or if you're not the listing agent, let, your, let you know a home in your neighborhood was recently sold after getting multiple offers. The sales price was pretty surprising and it affected your home's value. Would you like me to share more details about this sale? And after providing the details, say, 
Well, due to multiple offers on that home, several buyers missed out and might be willing to pay a premium for your home in your neighborhood right now. So we're calling to see if you know of any neighbors who might consider selling. Again, do not ask them if they're consider selling as they will always bring that up if they are just as in the previous examples and the phone call with a critical question about a price at which they might consider selling so you'll be gathering that's the three scenarios and you'll be gathering information contact information through your circle prospecting efforts and systematic communication to your database is a foundational strategy for business growth. Now that's a mouthful, but basically what we're saying is you have an opportunity here to not be, you know, um, someone that's just canvassing the neighborhood. You're calling with three scenario, one of those three scenarios that's genuine and it's helping people. Uh, people that might want to sell at this time and get the best price. People that might um, like the idea of a buyer, uh, having a buyer right away. Um, there, there's many situations that you can create here that are, are going to bring your business uh, full circle. It just takes some time. Circle, no pun intended, right? So now you're going to have a consistent email going out to your entire database. What do I always say? Consistency is king. Content is queen. Or I think it's the other way around. I think content is king and consistency is queen, right? You got to have the content first. So whether you decide to direct email once a month or once a week, stay consistent. There should be a combination of market updates, community events, blog posts, or videos of, about local areas of interest. And they are the brand building emails that will keep us top of mind when the time comes for them to buy or sell a home. Now, <clears throat> again, if you have agent formula, Every month automatically we send out the Las Vegas market report and in that newsletter are the last uh, two or three blogs that we did and we do daily blogs. So depending on whether it's the end of the month and they get the live um, hotel or deals and show deals or um, they get the what's going on with the Golden Knights, whatever we do, because we do daily blogs. So they're going to get, you know, all at one time they're going to see. And when they click on that to read more, it goes to your website. And then they see how much information you have and other uh, and uh, not just the information, but they can search for homes on there very easily. And on every page, there's a call to action. So number two. Set them up on automated updates when a home like theirs comes on the market, goes under contract, or is sold in their neighborhood. So this can be set up by most um, by most anyone. Um, consistency is is vital, and automating this communication gives you the ability to reach more people. So I stumbled on that a little bit because I'm think I'm trying to think while I'm saying this, you know. Um, I understand the automatic, the automated updates, but I'm not real thrilled with the format of them. Uh, I think what I would do, everybody, is I would text them. Yeah, I would text them. I would text them. Um, think about it. It might be a text a day if you have that many in your database where their homes are selling. I don't know. Um, if you have like two or three farms, yeah, you might do two or three texts a day, but I think that's going to be bringing more success than just an automated update. That's, that's, I like to go the extra mile. And number three, you're going to provide a more personalized, unsolicited video at least once a year. Now, here again, let's think about this. I love the idea of the circle three pro prospecting. I love that. Those three scenarios I gave you. But in addition, you're going to send them um, a monthly Las Vegas market update, the Las Vegas market watch. You have agent formula. You're going to send them something when a house sells in their neighborhood. But I think number three, I would text them a video about what's going on uh, in the market. Um, I don't know. There's so many things that go on I, I, and tips. We give you tips all the time. You can give them tips, you know, how to update your home, how to renovate your home, how to give us do a little video about um, 
getting your list of handymen and painters and landscapers. And I would like probably touch base with them once, once three times. Well, I guess three times a, a month would be, um, would be perfect, but consistently like week one, week two, and maybe week four, something like that. And, you know, circle prospecting, it, it adds value to the homeowners in the neighborhood and it helps deepen your relationship with them. And all of a sudden you're the, you're the agent that they call. So I think that um, this is a great way now to get yourself ready for the future because you know, this market is not going to stay like this. And now you have the opportunity with homes flying off the shelf, like pancakes, right? You have the opportunity right now to do this and you have to seize the moment. You know, it, I mean, when the market's slow, you don't have this great opportunity. So if I can impress upon you anything today, take advantage of this market. It's going to remain the same, at least, let's say, for the next three months. You know, interest rates are going to inch, inch up. Multiple offers are going to subside at some point. But now, when we're as hot as can be, take advantage of the Circle 3 marketing and do it. And do it consistently. I love you all. I'm going to go to class. We're going to talk. Jimmy Dake's going to teach about new home versus resale strategies. And uh, if you're not signed up, uh, go to be.vegas and look at our class schedule. We have a class every week. Uh, they're generally ethics, law, agency, contracts, um, and general. So see you soon. I love you all. Have a great day.